Well, thank you very much for having me, first of all. Um, we do want to get the word out about this important action. Um, I've been working for the past year or so with an organization called Global Rights Compliance, and after a year-long investigation, we were able to conclude that there is ample evidence, more than ample evidence, of extensive crimes against humanity and war crimes in South Sudan. Um, and we referred that to the Office of the Prosecutor of the International Court in The Hague, uh, urging them to open a criminal investigation as the South Sudan. The, um, some of the, some of the critical evidence that we found was, that, and one of the landmark aspects of the report is that, or the document is that, um, we found a direct link between the mass use of starvation as a war crime against civilians and the massive displacement of the South Sudanese population. Uh, since the conflict started in 2013, uh, more than a million South Sudanese have been displaced from central Equatoria into the northern Uganda refugee camps, and uh, that did not happen by accident. Unfortunately, there was massive violence and starvation, um, destruction of property, sexual violence that led those people to leave the country. Yeah. And you filed the case, uh, according to the documents I've looked through, the case was submitted on the 23rd of January. How long does it take for the court in Hague to summon suspects? Well, what has to happen is they conduct a review of our submission. Um, based on past experience, it can take some time. Uh, some of these processes have gone on for, for more than a year. Uh, before the before the ICC makes a determination whether then to go on to the next step and actually open its own criminal investigation. So uh, while we have urged them to start the investigation as soon as possible, in our view, such investigations should have started years ago, but we've urged them to start it as soon as possible, but at the same time, we can't really expect it by next week or next month. It will probably be some months before we get an, uh, a further answer. And when I was scanning through your report, there are seven names yes. uh, of people there, and these names are, you know, highlighted, and you can't you can't know who are these seven leaders <laughs> from South Sudan who well, who will uh, be who will be taken to Hague. Well, our our, conf our filing with the ICC is confidential, which is the standard practice. Um, we have shared certain information, limited amount of information, publicly because we think it's important for the public to know and people in South Sudan to know that this is going on, um, but we're not at liberty to say. It. It's really part of our confidential filing. I can say that uh, they involve very senior uh, political and military leaders. And so, I mean, so South Sudan is not a member of the Rome Statute. How is that going to play right. out? Well, uh, you're absolutely right, and we've certainly made that point clear in our submission. Um, uh, unfortunately, South Sudan is not a member of the Rome Statute. Uh, however, there is very strong uh, jurisdictional precedent at the at the international court for finding finding the jurisdiction based upon what people in the industry or the the field call the the Bangladesh uh, Myanmar situation. In that situation, several years ago, the court found that it had jurisdiction where. Even though uh, Myanmar itself is not a, uh, also not a member state of the ICC, they were forcing mass, again, massive displacement into Bangladesh where the crimes were being committed. And therefore, since Bangladesh is a member state, therefore, uh, they, the ICC has jurisdiction. So our argument here is similar in the sense that we are saying that because Uganda, Uganda is a member state, that because of the nature of the crimes, because of the mass displacement, into, into Uganda that the ICC does in fact have jurisdiction. And based on your past experience as a prosecutor, yes. what is peculiar about South Sudan that this case is going to lead to arrests? Well, you hit the nail on the head. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, again, unfortunately in many cases, a long process, uh, but ultimately, typically, you know, we do get there. Um, if you look back at the Yugoslavia situation, it took it took some years to get all the accused in the dock, but ultimately it did happen. Ultimately, you know, Slobodan Milosevic was brought to the head and was prosecuted, although he died during his prosecution. And in the case of South Sudan, the revitalized peace agreement has some component 
in it that talks about the establishment of a hybrid court to try uh, would-be suspects who took part in the 2013 violence in 2016. Um, yes. Someone would argue, why don't you give that court time to do its work instead of going to Hague or going to the ICC? That's a great question. Um, the problem is, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's been calls for a hybrid court, a regional hybrid international court uh, for South Sudan since as far back as 2014, 2015. Uh, Ban uh, former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, the African Union's own commission of inquiry recommended uh, the, the establishment of a hybrid court. Both of the peace agreements to date one in 2015, the second in 2018, have both promised, guaranteed, uh, uh, contractually uh, committed themselves to establishing the hybrid court. Unfortunately, it never, has never happened. Uh, both the South Sudan government and the African Union have, at best, uh, dragged their feet, uh, and nothing has really come of it. And, uh, in fact, in fact, the South Sudanese leadership, the current leadership, has come out strongly against the court. How about the argument from the South Sudanese leaders who kept saying that uh, all these accusations against them is not fair because they are trying their best and they, are, they have been sending messages saying that they are implementing the peace agreement and they are asking for the international community to be patient? Well, first of all, the implementation of the peace agreement uh, has been painfully slow. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the transition period was recently uh, extended by basically two years, 24 months, and uh, it continues to be a difficult and slow process. Um, in, in response, in direct response to your question, um, we, it's a false, we think it's a false choice. There needs to be justice and accountability, and there needs to be real steps taken toward long-term peace and stability. And just a last question here, has there been any case brought against a situation like what you have in South Sudan, a polarized situation where brothers and sisters are killing each other. Well, of course, um, of course, you have the examples of the Yugoslavia tribunals and the Rwanda tribunal. In the Rwanda tribunal, of course, that tremendous and horrific genocide was brought before the International Tribunal, uh, Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, and many people were prosecuted for that, and that also involved interethnic tribal violence against one another. Uh, there's also a special court that's, ha that's actually taking place in the Central African Republic. Um, it, it can probably do with some improvements, but it is an example of something that can be done. And the ICC and the special court there are working together to bring people to justice.